Hi YouTube and welcome to Danielle's Denture Diaries. I am Danielle and today we are going to be talking about dentist anxiety. <laughs> um, that is something I have not covered really on my channel at all before. Um, I believe that there are obviously notions of people who have dentist anxiety and I feel like it's very common. I don't feel like it's very common for people to say, oh, I don't mind going to the dentist, or I'm excited to go to the dentist. I feel like more often than not, people dread it, they put it off, they kind of sulk when they talk about it. So um, it's something I wanted to talk about here because along with the first steps of starting the denture process being calling your health insurance, um, dental insert insurance to see what's covered and who it's covered with and going in doing the consultations and all that the true square one is what if you have dentist anxiety um, so I did just a little bit of research um, because at the end of the day there are things you can do to give yourself reassurance there are things you can do to prepare at the end of the day going to the dentist regardless if you have dentures if you're thinking about getting dentures if you don't have dentures going to the dentist is obviously something highly recommended you can't really get away from it you can't get around it um, so ultimately finding a way to have mind over matter um, because it does, your dental hygiene and care does matter. Um, so one thing I did find is, is it normal to have anxiety at the dentist? And all I did was I went to Google search engine. I typed in um, dentist anxiety. And one of the um, answers back from betterhealth.vic.gov is, Dental anxiety is common, but there are ways to help you manage it. Dental phobia is less common, and your dentist might need to work with your doctor and your other health professionals to manage it. If anxiety prevents you from going to the dentist, there are things that can help you cope. Um, and before that, there are um, a few tips from dentalassociates.com that website does sound familiar. I'm pretty sure I've used them before in previous videos. Um, so sharing, prepare to share your fears with your dentist. Um, honestly, when I shop my dentist or surgeons or whatever, I make my fears pretty well known up front in an effort to one, not only get some reassurance and preparation work in, but also seeing what their bedside manner is like because if they are dismissive if they give you like any kind of like an attitude or they like roll their eyes because you're scared that's a red flag and you should probably go ahead and say you know what I changed my mind now and here is not a good time so thank you so much and leave just because you're sitting in the chair does not mean you have to sit there and take whatever attitude they may have or anything like that. Um, I will keep reiterating, I want to assume dentists and our medical professionals are good people. Um, sometimes maybe they have bad days, sometimes they may lack training, sometimes they are just maybe a little more rough around the edges, whatever it may be. However, it is still a place of business. It is still a person who needs to be servicing you as their customer or client and if they're not servicing you in a way that you feel comfortable or confident going in it's probably a problem and you should not be giving them your money or health insurance money or anything like that um, plan ahead for me what that would look like is having things like um, bottled water after before um, making sure I'm wearing comfy clothes if the dentist office will allow it I will take in a um, small blankie because I always run very cold and if I'm cold and tense and scared 
it tends to make me feel very sick even though I'm not so I will do that and um, part of it is also a sentimental thing um, back when I was first starting my reconstructional surgeries um, my dad would go with me and he would always put his hand on my my shin and um, when something really intense was going to happen, like if they were about to come in with the shot with the, of Novocaine or whatever, he would kind of tighten his grip on my shin. And for whatever reason, that was reassuring for me. So having a blanket kind of mimics that for me. is like a hug or a squeeze. Um, also having headphones. I love listening to music when I'm at the dentist's office. It allows me to almost escape where the work is being done and go to a different place in my head and as well as in my emotions where I can be thinking about literally just anything. I could be daydreaming, I could be thinking, I could be planning. Um, really sky is kind of the limit at that point so almost kind of meditating even um, depending on what the medication is for that point in time at the time obviously I don't need that anymore at this point but um, taking headphones was always a really big thing now I don't need them I just kind of spit my dentures out and give it to the to my dentist and go from there um, watch your food and water intake um, I will not go the route of you know stay away from acidic drinks Da, 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 candies, I will go the route of preparation for the dentist appointment itself. Um, if you expect that you will be put on nitrous or laughing gas, I highly recommend you eat a very, very small meal. I personally myself had eaten an entire Chick-fil-A meal and a strawberry milkshake beforehand and it was not good. It was very bad, <laughs> um, particularly for my hygienist. Um, yeah, everyone else was fine. She was the one that had to ultimately pay the price. So um, just be mindful. Anything, any excessive work, not excessive, any bigger or larger amounts of work that will be done, make sure you're talking to your dentist about, okay, well, what... Is this procedure going to look like? Do you recommend I eat a lot, a little, nothing? And they'll tell you. Um, practice a deep breathing technique. For me, it more comes down to breathing in general. Um, granted, I'm laying down, so passing out isn't exactly like the worst fear for me personally. Um, if having a breathing technique like in the lobby or... Um, you know, at some point while you're waiting or if you're standing at the desk helps you, then that's awesome. Personally, I really love that on my Fitbit. No, this is not sponsored, but on my Fitbit that I have, um, there's an app that you can click on and it says relaxation or something like that. And it has you follow the circle where you breathe in and you breathe out and you follow the circle and it does it for a while. Um, but what I was going to say is once I'm in the office chair, um, my bigger thing is remembering to breathe in general because as someone's coming at me with like the needle or a drill or a file or floss, um, I tend to hold my breath and push back into the chair, almost like getting away from them. But I know that's not what's happening. Um, so for me, just remembering to breathe. Um, visit your dentist regularly. Avoid skipping or prolonging appointments. I feel like that's a given. It's also better said or easier said than done. Um, I know I personally would get a lot of satisfaction out of actually going through with booking the appointment and not putting it off anymore. I would also get satisfaction out of going to an appointment that I myself booked. I understand that that should be a commonality for an adult, but that was a really great sense of accomplishment for me. 
um, because I am one that I would avoid the dentist at all costs because I was one fearful that they would tell me it was all my fault um, that I didn't do good enough that kind of stuff um, but also I had a bad customer experience which is why I encourage all of you to be very protective of yourself and the fact that when you go into a, a dentist's office it's just like if you were shopping for your new local target you go into a target it's a mess their Starbucks is closed all the time it's never open um, all the cashiers are rude whatever odds are you're probably not going to want to go back to that specific target and if you can help it you will go to a target where it's clean it's nice it'll get the job done and in the meantime, all the cashiers, or most of them, are at least cordial and not outright rude. I worked retail and I worked at Target, so I know sometimes days are hard, but you don't have to be rude. But anyway, that's a side rant. Um, but the more often that you can make it to your dentist appointments and you can um, stay on top of that, the more likely your dentist is going to not need to do as much work the next time because you're so on top of it. Um, so that would give you some sense of factual and logical reassurance that, okay, the last time I was there, they said this, they did that, so here's where I'm at. Um, and then the last one is asking your doctor to explain the processes with you beforehand. Um, Dentists, I don't feel, at least every dentist I had ever gone to, they don't come out right and tell you what to expect. They don't come out with like a manual and tell you what to expect. They almost wait for you to ask the questions. So what I've found is I will text myself a um, list of questions. Sorry, I'm getting over the cough. I'm just still kind of calming down from it. Um, by the time you guys see this video, it's going to be probably like a week or two later, but um, if my voice sounds a little bit harder or softer, I don't know. Um, that's why. But if you can go to the dentist, ask them, hey, how do I prepare for this? Um, what should I expect? Am I going to be knocked out completely? Am I going to be somewhat awake? Or is there going to be Novocaine? Am I going to feel any pain? Or is it just going to be pressure? Like I said before, any person in the service industry, including medical and health professionals, the medical and health field, they still should at least be cordial. They don't have to be high-pitched and over the moon that you're seeing them that day but what I would at least look for is that they look you straight on they're not rolling their eyes they're answering your questions um, they show you patience if you don't understand and if you have to ask the question ten times over before you finally understand then that's what it takes and that's what how it should be um, but again, that's just my, that's my thing. If I could go to the dentist with each of you and go to bat for you guys, I would, because that's what I wish I would have had is someone to be like, Hey, you know what? You're not going to talk to her like that. In fact, we're done here. Come on, let's go. Um, but anyways, um, I found a website that goes over why you have dental dentist anxiety. Um, some are like fear of pain, that kind of stuff. Um, so further down on the list, I found smiles for life 
or though.com. Um, so if you hear my son playing in the background, we had to stay home for New Year's on a Monday, apparently. Um, one, look for a dental practice that caters to dental phobi phobics. You can, of course, call the front office to schedule your first consult or appointment, and you can say, hey, I have a lot of stress and anxiety regarding be seeing a dentist. Are you familiar with working with it? Do you have anything in place for that? Um, and they should answer the question pretty quickly because you won't be the first, nor will you be the last person unless the dentist's office literally just opened around the corner from you, I guess. Um, but even then, they're all professionals. They should have a understanding in place like hey if a patient calls and asks this is what I personally as a physician do for my client sitting in the chair um, technology for the win <laughs> so television music a warm blanket literally what I just said um, don't go to your first visit alone I recommend that if you have a best friend or a significant other, whoever knows about your dental situation, which I hope someone does, um, that's a very heavy thing to carry around by yourself. You deserve to be able to have someone to vent to, to talk to, um, someone who hopefully can hold you accountable to booking your appointments when needed and showing up to them. Maybe having them show up and carpool you, drive you to your appointment would be a wonderful thing. And even more so if you have a friend or family member who can have the understanding that maybe you do have that anxiety. Maybe you're like me and you're an obliger so you're not going to complain. But having someone else with their ears open and listening to the conversation who can call it out and say, hey, you're not going to talk to my friend like that hey that was a little harsh hey you know what get up like we're not gonna stay here for this this is ridiculous or whatever um, within reason just because the dentist says something you may not like doesn't make them mean um, but again there is that way of saying it that can either come across as okay they're a straightforward person or this person's very empathetic and cares very much um, the next one is arrive on time, but not too soon. I do agree with that. I would say be at least five minutes early. Um, I know dentist office appreciate when you're there 10 to 15 minutes early, especially if it's your first visit, so you can do the necessary paperwork and insurance work. Um, but what this article literally says is the last thing is that you want that you want is to have a long wait before you see your dentist um, bringing a magazine or a book that you've been meaning to read with you so that you'll be distracted and having your imagination run wild is helpful personally I really do lean back on YouTube for appointments um, any lags in time where I'm not doing anything um, it's just easier for me to escape when there's a vocal and a visual. Um, but reading, of course, is nice, too. Use some of these surefire relaxation techniques throughout the visit, and then there's a link. Um, I can provide this website down in the description box as well for this video, so if any of you want to try it... Sorry, my nose is itchy. <laughs> um... But again, like if you have like a Fitbit, go to the relaxation app on it, doing the breathing exercises, um, that kind of stuff will help. Um, and then the next one is ask your dentist for the appropriate sedation options. So having them, you know, give you the nitrous oxide or ni nitrous, is that? Yes, nitrous. Um, laughing gas for me was a huge thing during my reconstructional surgeries um, otherwise of course with like dentists or denture dental extraction in particular for 
a denture installation, like a full extraction, being fully IV sedated is what I did, and it was very nice. <laughs> Don't fall into the trap of being a martyr where discomfort is concerned. Um, Pain-free dentistry is a reality, and it's the job of the dentist to make sure that you don't feel any pain while they are working in your mouth. I am absolutely guilty of this. My son is here. Um, I am absolutely guilty of this. I brave through the pain because I don't want to be... that please I will in a bit I don't want to accidentally break it more put it down please can you find something else to play with for a bit Max you might break it more though it's already split in half see the whole dinosaur is split in half Can you find something else to go play with? I might need tools to fix it, Max. Yes, look, it's already breaking more of it. Please stop. I know, please stop. Babe, please stop. Find something else to play with. I want to help you with that, but if you keep doing that, it's not going to help. Thank you. Um... I don't want to be a burden on anybody. I I am an obliger, um, which means that I won't be one to complain. I will give, 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 give until I have nothing left. Um, that's just my personality. Um, and same goes for pain coming from my dentist, apparently. So um, that's something I personally need to work on and take to heart. <laughs> Um, asking questions, do not be afraid to ask questions. Again, if you ask a question or you're just trying to have a conversation with the dentist, even if you go the entire appointment and at the end of it you get in your car, you get home a week later, whatever, if you think back on that conversation and you don't feel like you were respected and made to feel as comfortable as possible, it is okay to not go back to that dentist. You don't have to keep going back to a dentist you dread. Um, taking breaks. Stop whenever... Oh. Stop whenever you need a break. A sensitive dental team will give you time to relax when necessary. For my reconstructional surgery um, processes and all the numerous appointments I had to go to, they absolutely gave me breaks, and it was actually a relief for everybody when not only would I say something, but my dentist himself would also make the judgment call because I would start responding or acting a certain way. He would make that decision himself as well, but if I... My cue is I would always hold on to the arms of the dentist chair, and if I started tapping... That means I had something to say, something hurt, I needed a break, and he would take everything away from my face and have me say my piece. Um, so I absolutely encourage that. It was good for me to take that break, kind of like re-regulate my breathing at least, um, and get emotionally and mentally prepared for the next phase of the appointment. They would reestablish my medication or sedation. Um, they would reset the nitrous for me. My dad would get up and walk around, stretch his legs. The dentist would get up, stretch his legs. And the hygienist, of course, would get up, stretch her legs, and she would usually come back and sit with me and talk to me a little bit more. Um, and then the last one is make your next appointment before you even leave the office. That is what I do. I have to. I am honestly not the best at making phone calls to dentists or doctors on my own behalf and keeping track of when my next appointment should be. So that's what I do. Um, 
and it says you're more likely to come in for a follow-up appointment if you don't have to contact the office later in order to schedule it. Exactly like I said. Um, there's a little note here that says, Lastly, today's dental offices are welcoming places that specialize in painlessly keeping your smile bright and healthy. Use our dentist anxiety tips as a safety blanket to guide you through your next dental experience. You'll enjoy a beautiful and healthy smile in return. And, oh, it was for Smiles for Life Orthodontics um, in Flower Mound, Texas. So if you're in Texas, that was a website I just used. Okay. Um, but that is what I have for you guys for this video. Um, if you guys have your own tips and ideas of ways to combat dentist anxiety or maybe things that help hold you accountable when you yourself may not necessarily be in the mood to go to the dentist or pick up the phone, um, if you guys have go-to strategies that help you cope, please drop those in the comments for your fellow denture, dental, dentist, support group people here. Um, if you like videos like this one, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos from me in the future, go ahead and subscribe. And I will talk to you guys later. Bye.